welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 5 for September the 29th, 2019. We're still in Unit 1 entitled, God is Faithful. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is One More Chance. Our devotional reading is taken from Psalm 103, uh, verses 1 through 14. Our background scripture is taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verses 10b through uh, verse 23. And our print passage today uh, is taken from the book of Numbers, chapter uh, 14, uh, verse 10b through verse 20. Our key verse reads, In accordance with your great love, forgive the sin of these people, just as you have pardoned them from the time they left Egypt until now. That's taken from Numbers chapter 14, uh, verse 19 from the NIV translation. We have uh, uh, three lesson aims today uh, that are part of our lesson. Uh, the first aim is in um, talks about to be able to comprehend the significance of Moses intercession uh, for the people of Israel secondly to repent of rebelling against God's plans and refusing to trust in God's strength and then thirdly to ask for forgiveness of your sins as well as those committed by others we have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled A Divine Accusation. Second outline is entitled A Plea for Another Chance. And then the third outline is entitled Granted Another Chance. I certainly thank and praise God for this opportunity yet again to be able to share our Sunday school lesson with you and as we often encourage you to do um, to be a part of this lesson um, to be able to follow us uh, in your Bible uh, to prepare yourself to uh, engage in some other passages of Scripture that we're going to share that is a part of this lesson today uh, we have been discussing uh, in our Sunday school lesson for the last couple of weeks about uh, complaining and we can see through this historical account uh, with Israel that uh, we are no different uh, even today uh, from them uh, we still find uh, occasion opportunity to complain um, about our circumstances and so we want to be able to take a look at this lesson and I hope that uh, <clears throat> it humbles you um, to ask God for forgiveness of uh, the spirit of complaining uh, we all have uh, engaged in this uh, particularly because of our circumstances that we'll be able to see through uh, Israel's life uh, in history but I want to read a little bit of this biblical context uh, for this lesson uh, the book of numbers is a historical record of the Lord's preparation of Israel to take possession of the promised land so it records the nation's journey from Sinai to the plain of Moab uh, close to the time of Moses death uh, chapters 1 through 10 reveal how uh, God taught them to function as a community bound by his covenant with them and their relationship with one another. So God wanted to teach them that he alone was able to guide them uh, through a hostile environment and protect them from the enemies and temptations that uh, lay ahead. I also want to share just a little bit of the context from our lesson standard uh, just to help us with where we uh, uh, where we are going in this lesson but today's lesson follows immediately on the heels of last week's lesson uh, the discouragement brought about uh, by the ten spies report 
uh, grew into a rebellion against Moses and Aaron. So the text concluded with the congregation desiring to stone Caleb and Joshua. You can see that in Numbers uh, chapter 14 verse 10a. So today's lesson begins with words of uh, even more ominous uh, as God comes in judgment to a people blinded by unbelief. So we started uh, 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 back in Numbers chapter 13 uh, just to give you a little bit more context that uh, uh, the children of Israel had reached a pivotal point uh, in their journey from Egypt uh, so they sought to spy out the land if you will uh, the promised land uh, a land flowing with milk and honey that God wanted to give them and promised to give them and so um, these spies uh, at least ten of them uh, brought back a bad report uh, concerning the promised land and it caused a um, uh, a disruption if you will it caused the children of Israel to be discouraged uh, by the news uh, and so uh, it also caused the children of Israel to weep caused them to mourn it caused them to uh, complain and it caused them to seek to go back to Egypt where they believed it would be better for them uh, to die as opposed to moving ahead and um, uh, following the plan that God had for them uh, prior to him delivering them from Egypt. But I was looking at Psalm 103. This is part of your um, devotional reading. And I want to look at verse 10 very quickly as we get into this lesson today. And I believe that we will all be able to identify uh, with the fact that God has been very good to us. He has been extremely kind. He has been extremely merciful uh, to us. And this Psalm 103 verse 10 uh, highlights at least for me. Uh, a reflection of God's goodness. Psalm 103 verse 10 the Bible says he has not dealt with us according to our sins nor punished us according to our iniquities. And so as we look at this lesson today God has given us one more chance. He has given us more opportunities than we can count. Uh, God has made countless uh, efforts toward our lives that we might be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth and so as we look at this first outline today uh, taken from the uh, 14th chapter the book of Numbers uh, verse 10b through verse 12 and I want to read this um, uh, from the King James Version I want to keep in mind here that the children of Israel are now uh, have uh, sought to uh, stone to kill two of the spies uh, Caleb and Joshua and so God is intervening uh, with the nation of Israel at this time and the Bible says and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel and the Lord said to Moses how long will this people provoke me and how long will it be here if they believe me for all uh, the signs which I have shown unto them or among them verse 12 I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they so as we look at this account today, God is accusing or indicting, if you will, or making an indictment of the children of Israel's attitude toward him and toward the fact that they are not believing 
on him. They are not believing uh, on his promises. They are not believing on the covenant. And truth be told, they are not even believing on what they have seen God do for them in the past. And so uh, it is an affront um, to God's character uh, that we would accuse him. And this is Israel's mindset here that subsequently uh, being delivered from Egypt that now they are a place at a place in their in their uh, journey that they don't believe God is able to save them God didn't need them to spy out his promises God didn't need them to check on uh, the fact that uh, uh, of what his blessings would be and if he were going to bless them uh, God needed them to believe. God needed them to adhere to. And so now uh, it's not the witnesses or the spies fault uh, in terms of uh, Joshua and Caleb who they wish to stone. It's their fault. Uh, when we don't believe the gospel, uh, it's our fault. Uh, we cannot blame anyone. Uh, for our lack of faith or our lack of adherence but God will show up and intervene on behalf of those who are upholding uh, his integrity Moses and Aaron uh, faced the threat of removal from office as Joshua and Caleb faced death by stoning because they encouraged the people to move forward into a situation the people perceived uh, as dangerous. This is Numbers 14 verse 4a and then verse 10a. So before the people could carry out their plan, God appeared in his glory at the tent of meeting and immediately took control of the situation. So uh, God did not address the nation but he spoke to Moses so God brought two divine accusations against the people. The first thing, they had aroused his anger. And second, they had stubbornly refused to believe despite the many signs he had performed among them. So God charges, uh, God's charges against Israel place the blame on the people and identified himself as the real target of their unbelief and I think that's that is huge when we think about our unbelief uh, when we think about our lack of faith and we think about the fact that uh, God has given instructions uh, God has given us his word and in their case God has given the Mosaic law he has given them a leader uh, he has given them a intercessor, a mediator. And so uh, uh, they have sought to blame Moses, blame God, blame the situation instead of uh, uh, reflecting on this is their fault. This is their lack of faith. Uh, and so this provoked God to anger. And so God sought to intervene. Uh, to save uh, Joshua and Caleb and to intercede on behalf of Moses um, to help these individuals understand that this is a place where they needed to go forward uh, but instead they sought to complain and kill the witnesses as uh, the witnesses for God so it's very important that as we look at this lesson today that uh, this lesson serves as a type or examples for us um, uh, as we go forward and as we think about the things that God has done in our lives we have a history with God you and I can look back over our lives and we can see where the Lord have brought us out of many situations on multiple occasions and that is to help establish us 
uh, for future trials and for future issues that may come up in our lives that the same God that delivered us yesterday is the same God that we are depending on to deliver us today so uh, but the children of Israel because of this bad report uh, about what the promised land uh, look like and uh, uh, the obstacles that they may face they sought to go backward instead of forward uh, I also want to give you Numbers chapter 14 uh, verse 41 uh, through verse 45 uh, and so sometimes as we'll see in this lesson we are guilty of trying to engage uh, in life without the Word of God. We are trying to go uh, uh, forward without the Word of God. And so when we choose uh, to, unbel to, uh, to not believe what the Lord has said, uh, we have nothing to stand on. We have nothing to shield us, if you will, I also want you to look at Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 and verses 16 and 17. But we see here the question in the quarterly is asked, uh, what accusations can God make against his people today in terms of their obedience uh, to and to trust in him? So there are many things uh, that God perhaps could say to us today um, because we have not adhered to uh, his word. We have not been as obedient as we should have been. We have not trusted in him as we uh, should have. And all of us have this uh, in our lives. And so I don't want you to think that this is just exclusive to Israel. But these things are happening uh, with us today but we have a remedy for that situation uh, and it is simply to ask God to help us even in the face of unbelief uh, but there are some things that happen to us uh, when the Word of God is given to us I want you to look at Matthew chapter 13 at your leisure God had given the children of Israel instructions he had given them many signs to believe. He had worked out many miracles on their behalf uh, to deliver them from Egypt. He brought them out. Uh, he spared them. Uh, he didn't allow uh, uh, the conditions to come upon them that came upon the Egyptians. But it, it was not enough for them uh, to, to use as a platform of God's mercy and his grace toward them so uh, as situations changed in their lives they changed uh, and they went backward they changed on God they didn't uh, uh, keep the faithfulness uh, that uh, God expected them uh, to have but as I was reading this lesson uh, and thinking about Israel and thinking about us uh, I want us to understand that as we all would say today that we have faith uh, I don't know how much faith you have you don't know how much faith I have but our faith is going to be tried and I, I liken faith to what Paul says to Timothy in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6 verse 12 uh, to keep the faith is is like a fight uh, Paul says to Timothy fight the good fight of faith we have to fight to believe in other words we have to overcome the opposition the negativity uh, uh, all of the uh, obstacles that may come up that cause us or present to us the fact that God is not able to do this uh, as well as to do that and this is a everyday uh, constant battle that we see in life today 
uh, that we have to fight the good fight of faith. Uh, the devil is not just going to move out of the way and let you go forward. He is going to fight you uh, at every stage of your life. And so as we look at uh, Matthew 13 uh, uh, that I gave you, um, we can see that there's some activity that goes on when we or engage with the Word of God the enemy comes to snatch that word away from you you need to keep that word you need to hear that word because that word is something that uh, that uh, 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 that brings about faith uh, Romans chapter 10 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God so when it's time to hear the Word of God we see that is the activity of Satan that comes in uh, to that setting to make sure that we don't hear so we don't have faith in what we hear and we don't have anything to stand on and so when the trial comes we have no references I hope you understand that today so this is the spiritual content of this historical account with Israel something spiritual is happening with them even though something natural is happening with them. Uh, they would not be seeking to stone those who have brought back good news if something spiritual was not happening in their hearts and in their minds. Our second outline is entitled A Plea for Another Chance. This is taken from Numbers uh, chapter 14 uh, verses 13 through 19. I want to read this from the NIV translation. So Moses said to the Lord, Then the Egyptians will hear about it. By your power you brought these people up from among them, and they will tell the inhabitants of this land about it. They have already heard that you, Lord, are with these people, and that you, Lord, have uh, been seen face to face that your cloud stays over them and that you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night verse uh, 15 uh, if you put all these people to death leaving none alive the nations who have heard this report about you will say the Lord was not able to bring these people into the land uh, he promised them on oath so he slaughtered them in the wilderness. Now may the Lord's strength be displayed as you have declared. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love and forgiving sin and rebellion. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. Uh, he punishes the children of, uh, for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Verse 19. In accordance with your great love, forgive the sin of these people just as you have pardoned them from the time they left Egypt until now. So here we find Moses interceding, praying for, if you will, on behalf of the people's unbelief, reasoning with God that if you kill these people somebody's gonna say some bad things about you that you were not able to keep them and you were not able to bring them and so Moses this type of Christ if you will is interceding on behalf of the children of Israel and he is really uh, like a good lawyer if you will arguing the case to keep these people alive don't kill them forgive them uh, can you see Jesus working in your life can you see Jesus on the cross father forgive them for they know not what they do can you see the shedding of the blood of Jesus for the remission of sins can you see the sacrifice through Moses in Jesus Christ that he paid the price so you and I could live I hope you can make the relation from this account this type of intercessor in Moses 
as we look into the New Testament what Christ also did. I don't know all the conversations that uh, God or Jesus on my behalf has uh, uh, took before the Father that he might spare me. Uh, but what I do know, I have been spared. You know you have been spared. And this is all Moses is saying to God. Spare these people. Remember your covenant with them. Lord, you've been good. Forgive them of what they're saying. Forgive them of the reflection of their heart. They're speaking out things that uh, they don't understand or offending you. Their lack of faith is offending you. Their lack of appreciation for what you have done for them is offending you. And sometimes our unbelief cuts God at the heart because what more can he do? What more could he have done for Israel um, than he had already done? But for the second time, Moses refused God's offer to start uh, anew by making a great nation from his descendants. I want you to look at num uh, Exodus chapter uh, 32 verses 10 through 14 and also Numbers chapter 14 verse 12. Uh, but each time Moses interceded on behalf of the people and sought to protect God's reputation among the Egyptians uh, and the inhabitants of Cana. So Moses is pleading here with God don't start over. Give us another chance. Give the children of Israel uh, another chance. Uh, so Moses asked God to verify his greatness for forgiving the sins of the people as he had done several times in their exodus from Egypt. God has been so good to us even since the day that he brought us out of our Egypt, of our bondage, of our darkness, of our plight. We have complained against God. We have not had uh, enough of this and enough of that. Uh, and so, but nevertheless, God has continued to show forth his mercy and his grace, even when we don't deserve it. And so we're going to look at that as we get into uh, these dispensations uh, uh, from the Old Testament uh, and the New Testament and then also from a legal perspective uh, to a grace perspective. But the question is asked, what are some of the urgent conditions in our world and local congregations that require intercessory prayer? There are a lot of things that we do uh, that we are interceding. We are praying for people who don't have a mind to pray for themselves. Um, you know, that is something that I saw in this lesson today. Is if you would read this account even uh, on your own, I don't see where the people ever prayed for their lack of faith. I don't see where they prayed for themselves. Uh, I see Moses praying for them, and that's a good thing. Uh, Moses interceding for them. But what I love about the cross what I love about what Jesus did at Calvary. He fixed it that you can pray for yourself. There's absolutely nothing wrong with interceding on behalf of another. Uh, even as Moses is interceding on behalf of the children of Israel. But we have a situation today as believers. We can pray for ourselves. We can go to the Father in the name of Jesus on our own and pray for ourselves. So it is urgent uh, as the question in the quarterly asks, what are some urgent conditions in our world and local congregations that require intercessory prayer? Who's going to do it? The saints of God understand 
that we need to reach out to God that we might be saved and so we pray for people uh, for all sorts of situations but one of the things that is central to our intercessory prayer for our congregations and even for conditions in the world is that we get a mind we need a mind to seek God out we need a mind for the Word of God we need an attitude if you will to understand that nobody is going to be able to deliver us but God we need a mind to understand that it God is sitting on the throne God has already given his son Jesus to die for our sins but we don't even have a mind to ask God to forgive us of our sins. We just keep doing wrong and compiling evil on top of evil. We don't even say that we are sorry to one another. And we would refuse to say we are sorry to God. So how long is God going to put up with that if you will and it is the thing that intercessory prayer seeks to accomplish God give us another chance God give our family members more time God give our leaders another chance and we just keep telling God to spare and that is what Moses is doing he is asking God to keep these people alive that don't believe in him. He is asking God to spare these people who refuse to believe that he is merciful. Moses is asking God to keep these unbelievers alive. That is something to think about. But we hope, trust, and pray that as we continue to intercede on behalf of so many people and for so many conditions, is that God would give them a mind to see where they are and what they need to do about where they are. I hope that you can understand that. But as we said about, uh, talked about these dispensations, uh, even in Israel's account, that is the mosaic law that is the mosaic system but in today's culture we are thinking about uh, the, the dispensation of grace that we're in uh, so I want you to look at Romans chapter 6 uh, verses 1 through 4 and, and, and let us understand this that God has a tipping point if you will God is not going to allow us to continue to exploit his grace as Romans chapter 6 would help us to understand. Grace is not given for us to continue to live in sin. It, that is not what it's for. God is not waking us up every morning for us to continue in sin. That is not what grace is for. God is allowing us time and time and time again to get our lives together. God is giving us grace in order that we might get a mind to see where we have fallen short. And this is what I am praying for. Uh, I don't want to see and you should not want to see anybody lost even if it's an enemy we should want to see God save them and even though the children of Israel fail to believe in God they are refusing they are stubborn they are rebelling but somebody in Moses case says keep them alive you and I should be dead you and I would have been lost if it had not been for Jesus interceding on behalf of our sinfulness, our refusal to believe, our disobedience toward God, our exploitation of his grace. 
Jesus stepped in right on time and he takes on the guilt that we have he takes on the condition that you and I are carrying and he takes it to the cross and it's nailed to the cross and he's bruised for our iniquities right he's pierced in the side he sheds his blood so you don't have to shed your blood he gives his life that your life is spared that is something to think about and we need to embrace God's forgiveness we don't talk so much about that uh, how profound that is that God has looked at us and all of the evil and the sin and the wickedness that we have engaged in and God has said to us when he saved you I forgive you I'm not going to hold it against you I'm going to let it go I'm going to give you another chance as a matter of fact you must be born again so I'm going to give you a brand new start I'm going to start it all over I'm going to give you new time right I'm going to give you new opportunities give you new grace and new mercy and I'm going to extend your life right let's forget about what you did in the past and let's move forward into the promises of God so our comfort if you will is that we don't have this hanging over our heads that's what intercessory prayer will do Moses is saying there will be something hanging over the children of Israel and your uh, promises toward them if you kill them but if you keep them alive right people will be able to see how good you are how merciful you are that you are able that you do have the power we are walking miracles and one of the reasons I believe that God has kept me alive and one of the reasons that I believe God kept you alive is so other people could see how good he is because people know where you came from and what you used to do and if people are able to see that nobody could have done that but God so we are active we are alive we are uh, uh, witnesses that people can see and make reference to God this is something uh, Matthew says I believe in the fifth chapter let your light so shine that men might see your good works and glorify the Father who is in heaven I hope you can understand that Our last outline is just one verse but it's entitled granted another chance numbers chapter 14 verse 20 from the NIV translation after this intercessory prayer if you will from Moses and his interceding on behalf of the unbelief of the children of Israel the Lord re replied I have forgiven them as you asked wow that is something to think about the thing that Jesus has done at Calvary has demonstrated to us that we have been forgiven the fact that God was pleased to crush his only son and put him to grief just like Isaiah 53 says should be a strong indication to us that God has forgiven us the fact that Jesus got up on the third day with all power in heaven and earth in his hands 
should be a strong indication to us that we have been justified by faith through Jesus Christ alone. The fact that God was pleased with his death to pay for our sins should be a strong indication to us that we have a new day. We have another chance. We've been given a new start. We've been given new opportunities, right? So it's incumbent upon us now to fight the good fight of faith, to keep believing, to keep hoping, to keep trusting in God, the same one who provided all of this evidence that he has forgiven you, who have provided a historical account. And here's the beauty. God has established a historical account in every believer's life. I don't know how many believers there are, but each one of them has a history with God. It's, it's amazing how we can come together and we can all lift up a praise and worship to God. But all of us have a different account of what the Lord has done in our lives. A different account, but the same God. A different history path, but the same God. Right? Different circumstances, but the same God. It's the same God that brought Israel out, that brought you out. The same one. The father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the same God that set you free yesterday and the day before that, that brought you out last week, last month, last year, is the same God of Genesis. The same Holy Ghost that keeps you every day is the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. The same one at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. The same one has brought us all and has kept us all. Look at that history. But God has never left us nor will he. I hope, trust, and pray that you can see the importance of faith. I also want to leave with you Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Our closing prayer, dear God, forgive us for rebelling against you so many times and in many ways. Thank you for continually allowing us another chance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.